Iraq. And to our little study tonight, it's a short study, but it will be a good study. So we all need help in daily living. And so we're going to look at a statement from Sister White dealing with our trials that we all have. None of us are exempt from trials. The badge of Christianity is not an outward sign, not the wearing of a cross or a crown, but it is that which reveals the union of man with God. By the power of his grace manifested in the transformation of character, the world is to be convinced that God has sent his son as its redeemer. No other influence that can surround the human soul has such power as the influence of an unselfish life. Isn't that powerful? Ken. This one's off? You've lost my mic. Did you switch it on? No, I'm on. Thanks, Ken. Um, this, is, this quote is taken, thank you, from page eight of the book, Help in Daily Living. All right. So no other influence that can surround the human soul has such power as the in influence of an unselfish life. The strongest argument in favor of the gospel is a loving and lovable Christian. That's what we want to be, a lovable Christian. To live such a life, to exert such an influence, cost at every step effort, self-sacrifice, discipline. It is because they do not understand this that many are so easily discouraged in the Christian life. Many who sincerely consecrate their lives to God's service are surprised and disappointed to find themselves as never before confronted by obstacles and beset by trials and perplexities. They pray for Christ's likeness of character, for a fitness for the Lord's work, and they are placed in circumstances that seem to call forth all the evil of their nature. Faults are revealed of which they did not even sus suspect the existence. Like Israel of old, they question, if God is leading us, why do all these things come upon us? It is because God is leading them that these things come upon them. Trials and obstacles are the Lord's chosen methods of discipline and his appointed conditions of success. He who reads the hearts of men knows their characters better than they themselves know them. He sees that some have powers and susceptibilities which, rightly directed, might be used in the advancement of his work. In his providence, he brings these persons into different positions and varied circumstances that they may discover in their character the defects which have been concealed by, from their own knowledge. He gives them opportunity to correct these defects and to fit themselves for his service. Often he permits the fires of affliction to assail them that they may be purified. The fact that we are called upon to endure trial shows that the Lord Jesus sees in us something precious which he desires to develop. If he saw in us nothing whereby he might glorify his name, he would not spend time in refining us. He does not cast worthless stones into his furnace. It is valuable ore that he refines. The blacksmith puts the iron and steel into the fire that he may know what manner of metal they are. The Lord allows his chosen ones to be placed in the furnace of affliction to prove what temper they are of and whether they can be fashioned for his work. So now we want to look at a couple texts. If somebody would look up uh, 1 Peter, and another person would look up James. And uh, when you get that text or you want to read that text, read your hand. I'll get one. Barb will get the other. Somebody? Sherry, do you have 1 Peter 4, 12 through 14? 
Beloved, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. It's a paradigm shift, isn't it? It's, we're not accustomed to being really happy when trials happen. Okay, James. Okay, sister. James, the servant of God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, the strong tribes which are scattered abroad, speaking. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall on various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Hmm. All right. So now let's look at five E's of trial. Okay? The five E's of trial. The first one is expect a life full of them. <laughs> Welcome to being a Christian. Expect a life full of them. You're not going to be exempt. Okay? Number two, embrace the lesson that these trials can take and bring to you. So, trials come, and my father used to always say, they can make you bitter, or they can make you better. Uh. And uh, so, embrace them. Number three, experience God through them. When trials come, don't look at the trial and how terrible it is, but look to God and say, you know what? This is your problem. I gave you my life. You deal with it. And it's amazing how God will deal with it. And until you try that, you, you just you don't know how wonderful an experience it can be to be hounded by the devil and to say, God, I can't deal with this, but I know you can take this from me. And a minute later, it's gone. It's just amazing. Number four, let your faith be empowered by them. And, you know, I've always thought as being a, a more elderly person that I have so many years of experience of things happening and seeing God work that my faith has been built through these over the years. And I think of our young kids and I think, you don't have the years of experience, but that's where I can share with them. Hang in there because God's going to see you through because I've been there. And here's how God worked in my life. And that's how we can share our testimony with these that haven't built that experience of faith yet. So let your faith be empowered by them. Number five, empathize and encourage others that are battling trials in their life. We all are battling trials. And once we come to church and say, hey, brother, how's your trials this week? <laughs> yeah, I want you to know I had some too. But, you know, with God, we got through it, didn't we? And we encourage each other. Right? Okay, a couple more verses. A few people would look up. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. And someone, Romans 8, 28. Thank you, David. You got 1 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4? Is it first or second? Oh, second, yeah. Don't let me throw you off. <laughs> Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforted us all in all tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Okay. And Romans 8, 28. Okay. So, hopefully tonight, we can leave here with a new philosophy about our trials. 
a new look at it, a different look. You know, we need to daily pray and say, Lord, I know I'm going to be tested today. I know it's coming. Help me to be ready. And when it comes to give my life in that trial to you, so that you can take, and uh, Barb, hand over here, that you can take me through this trial. Jimmy? Yeah, just one sentence. Just one sentence. I have the margins of heavenly places, 273, paragraph 1. Those who have borne the greatest sorrows are frequently the ones who carry the greatest comfort to others. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. That's really good. So we learned tonight that the biggest influence we can have is what? And somebody? An unselfish life. The biggest influence we can have is that of an unselfish life. How about that? That's a good thing. All right. Well, we're about out of time. I want to do one last thing. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I've talked about, and you guys have heard about, it is written's every word. And um, I want to share with you uh, an every word. First, I'd like to show you what to do if you'd ever like to do this. So you go up here to the address bar, itiswritten.com. So you do that on your computer. And this is, this is the home page, and I just scroll down to every word. And I'm going to click on every word. And um, then it opens up, and it gives me all the every words that have been playing. They're every day. They're one minute long. So uh, I'm going to actually just type in here, in this search here, I'm going to type in trials and see if I can find an every word that has to do with trials. And uh, we'll listen to this. The pit devastated the cotton industry in Enterprise and across the American South in around 1915. And yet Enterprise has a prominent monument to the little monsters. But that's because when the cotton industry went belly up, desperate farmers diversified, planting peanuts and other crops, and they were very successful. By destroying the cotton industry, the boll weevil led Enterprise to a new level of prosperity. You can see the point. In life, we often encounter difficulties. But if you're looking, you'll see that in many cases, that's God leading you to blessings you wouldn't otherwise have realized. It says in James 1, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Your trial could be the avenue to greater blessings. I'm John Bradshaw for It Is Written. Now, these... these Every word's just one minute long, new every day. Now, I'm going to try to back up here and um, show you one more thing. And then I'm out of time here. Yes? Can I say they, they are on YouTube. You can subscribe and it will come up on your notifications. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's true. I was, actually, um, I was actually going to show here how you could subscribe. You see this box right here, every word? receive every word daily. If you click on that and put your email address in, then in the middle of the night, you'll get one sent. So when you wake up in the morning, it will be on your email. It's one minute long and you can listen to it or you cannot. You can delete it or it doesn't matter. But here's what I want to share with you. We all want to witness for the Lord in some way. And a lot of us are shy. We may, not everybody here can go out and talk to a person you don't know about Bible studies. But here's a way you can witness. Because when this gets emailed to you, every day it's on something different. Every day the topic's different. But one day, the one that you listen to, you're going to go, oh, I know who could really benefit from that. And you forward that every word to them in an email and say, I listened to this this morning, and I thought of you, and I wanted you to listen to it. I think it might be a blessing to you. And now you've just shared in a very simple way, a simple way. I'm out of time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it's been good to be with these dear, dear people. I pray you'll bless them in their walk with you. And as they grow in their, in their Christian walk, may they expect trials to follow them. But you're greater than those trials. 
and you've conquered Satan, you're already victorious. Help us not to look at the trial, be discouraged, but to look to you and have you win that victory in our life. Thank you so much for the way you've led us and you've grown us. And as we all strive for the character of Jesus in us, may it happen through our unselfish lives. In Jesus' name.